All right, everyone, welcome to the Leather Pocket Billiards in-house league playoffs here at Leather Pocket Billiards in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. We got a good one here. It's the winner side final of our in-house league playoffs. Who ate my rice? Taking on good, bad, and ugly. It's five player teams. It's a race to 13. These guys started real quick. I was a little busy handing out prize monies and filling out the bracket, but we're underway. It's four nothing. And they're at both tables shooting, although the table on the left is in big trouble now. <laughs> And welcome to everybody just tuning in. I'm going to try to load up some comments here on the Facebook and the YouTube chat. We're streaming on both platforms. So if you guys can do us a favor, click that share button. That's all we ever ask here. Free Q Sports live streams. We'll try to keep an eye on who's on which team, but Who Ate My Rice is wearing team shirts, so they shouldn't be too hard to tell apart. The other guys are kind of wearing random shirts. As mentioned, it is a race to 13 here, so they play a total of 25 possible games, but as soon as one team reaches 13, the match is over. And we will have two more matches after this. We have the, well, potential three. We have the B-side final coming up after this. The loser of this match will play the winner of 8-Ball Express, and Shape is Overrated. Winner of that will play, as I said, the loser of this match. So that'll be coming up right after this match. So don't go far after this. We'll have another one. And then, of course, we got the final scheduled for right around 6.30. We're a little bit behind pace. So we can probably safely say that'll be closer to 7.30. So team Who Ate My Rice, good friends of mine, all local players here at Leather Pocket. These guys probably, some of them spend more time in this pool room than I do. But all super nice guys and such a, a great community of players they have here. And I'm big fans of theirs. A couple of them know it, but hopefully more will know it today. And I'm sitting in this nice little uh, kind of closed off stream booth so I can almost talk as loud as I want. And Steph Toy is going to join me in a moment here. Stephanie said she would come help out with the stream for a little bit. She got a dinner to go to tonight, but that's all right. She's going to jump in for a match with me. Derek Moore in the house. David Wilson, welcome, everyone. Thank you guys for joining me on this nice Sunday afternoon. Hopefully enjoying some pool i know there's some good stuff going on today maybe you guys are watching some of the ultimate pool or maybe watching some of the snooker what a joy these next two weeks two and a half weeks are going to be from a snooker fan perspective world championships underway so it looks like we have player who ran the most eros this season on thursday night division on the left side table ruel had a real nice season eros we call eight ball run out it's when a player can break and run out or if their opponent breaks dry and they run out
tricky little shot on this right side table, but I think he's got enough of this 10 to cut it in. Definitely does. Oh, he razor thinned it. And he has this aid, I suppose. <laughs> it's questionable for a minute there. But I think he's got it, even if it just needs a touch of right spin to help it. This could be 5 nothing already. Who ate my rice? If anybody watched last season or the season before, these guys have won a couple times. They win some stuff. They're real tough to beat. I think they won the Summer League. And they play really well as a team, which is important. You can have good players, but if you can't play good as a team, trust each other in big moments, uh, it can be very tough out there. These guys, they play together a lot. Like I said, all pretty close-knit group. And I'm just trying to load up these YouTube comments. They're being a little slow. This tablet hasn't been turned on for a moment. We do have some more good stuff coming up in the next few weeks here. I can flash up on the screen, kind of in between games here and there. Two weeks from now, Huntington's disease, sorry, three weeks from now, Huntington's disease, hope for a cure, always an awesome event. This will be the third annual. We're super proud to host it here at Leather Pocket. Good friend of ours, Georgios. Doing great things out there to help the cause, and we're happy to do our part as well. So, 5 nothing. Looks like Mike Bain has stopped the bleeding for his team over there. They needed a win big time. This Filipino team, they'll run away with it for sure if you let them. They will just run away. 5-1, still a long way to go race to 13 here. We got our Sunday 10-ball tournament happening over there. We have weekly tournaments here at Leather Pocket, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays outside of our big events. So we have our... Sunday 10 ball there. Let's zoom in on the poster a bit for you guys. See the handicap here. So we try to keep it mostly fair. I mean, it's hard to get it 100% correct, but it's pretty close. Now we'll put up a couple more of the, the weekly tournament posters so you guys have an idea what it's like here at Leather Pocket. Hopefully you're enjoying this little split screen view we have. I'm not quite as good as Grant at setting it up, but I'm pretty proud of myself this time. <laughs> I wish I could get the colors closer, but but I'm patting my own back today. Oh, that's a big miss over there on the right. He was exactly where he needed to be and just got caught rolling the ball a little, and he took his eye off it a bit. That's a big miss from James. The captain of good, bad, and ugly, James Hornby. A regular around these parts as well. All that time getting YouTube comments loaded, and nobody's chatting in there. That's okay. They'll come alive. Watch another pool, you know. So I'll try to keep an eye on both these games. Hopefully I won't get any scores wrong, but if I do, feel free to uh, let me know in the comments here, guys. I'll fix them. And I may have to ref a shot here and there. I had to ref a couple earlier. The closer it gets, the more we're going to have to ref shots. It's always the way.
So James getting back to this table. Tricky shot on this one ball, but he has to shoot it. He's going to be a little jacked up over the stripe. Should be okay. Pocket plays big from there. But anytime you're elevated like that, it's going to be much tougher. As we saw. Yeah, I had the poster up there for you, Giorgio. So I'll put it up a couple more times in between so everybody knows about that tournament coming up. 20 teams paid for the Huntingtons already. That's great to hear. Hopefully we can get it up to 30 or so. It would be nice. Steph joining in. Hello, everybody. We're not missing too much of the action, but those guys jumped to a big lead. Mike kind of stopped the bleeding there for a minute. Mike Bain, he's had a good year. Really good year. I told him if there was a most improved player prize this year, it would have most likely went to him. I would have voted for him. He's been playing a lot. He played like three different leagues and he plays, you know, all the big tournaments and put some extra time in. Yeah. That's what it's all about. Well, they're telling me ultimate pools on break starts again at four. Oh, there you go. So they'll be watching this for half an hour. <laughs> Is Simon still in, Derek? He's out. Uh, yeah. He's out. He played uh, Reinhold, I saw. So he won his first match. And, and, yes. And then lost to Reinhold. So top 16, that's really good. Yeah. I think uh, 250 players 12 or 240 or, players. Yeah. 12 or 1300 bucks USD, I think he got. Not bad. Not terrible. That'll cover some of the expense of going to Louisiana from mm -hmm. BC, but not much of it. Maybe the flight. A little bit of the hotel. Better, not that Simon was too worried about that, but. Better than a kick in the butt. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> but he said he, uh, I read, actually, I just read his post, and he said that he blinked and he was down 5 nothing. Like, Chris played perfect. Yeah, Chris has been known to be a good eight ball player. So I've heard. Kind of excited to watch the uh, the finals of that. Me it's been too. pretty exciting. I just watched Tyler Tyler and, and Shohan went hill hill. Oh? Yeah. Shootout? <laughs> no, no shootout. No, no shootout. But, Who won? uh. It was Tony's break. He ran five balls and then just kind of got out of shape All and right. had to bank, and he, and he over, yeah. banked short. So then Tyler just backdoored him. Yeah. But it was, it was exciting because they're shooting fast, you know? Like, there's not a whole lot of time to think. 15 seconds. Well, and the, That's awesome. I love the 15 seconds. I think it, it creates the drama, the excitement, I'm right? Because fan of that. Because normally when you walk up to an eight-ball table, you have the time to, like, pick your, pick your out, your pattern. Mm -hmm where with that clock it kind of adds a different and different some, dimension some to of it. the shots are like i love to play fast but some of the shots are twice as hard if you have to shoot it quick. yeah yeah <laughs> yeah no it's exciting like your nerves aren't settled yet exactly right you're not ready yet but you have to shoot you have no choice yeah and you have like three seconds to make a decision because <laughs> yeah. you need the other 12 to go through your routine kind of right? yeah exactly well 11 because you don't want to shoot on the last second right yeah, what a format. I'm a huge fan. Hennessy has no chance. <laughs> Wasn't he still in, though? No, he was. He I think he is still did in. Did he make the final 32? I think he is. Everybody thinks he plays so slow, but he can play quick, too. He, yeah, I mean, he's been doing great. It's so funny, like, put put that pressure on him, and he and he has to shoot fast. He's not. Anybody that talented. Yeah, I mean, he's, like he's eight, making the shots. Yeah, he's close to 800 Fargo, I think. Dude is, like... He can pot the ball. Yeah. <laughs> it is exciting to watch. It's just for, it's different. But he can't. It's chalk, 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 chalk. I don't know how how far it will go as a pro event, but yeah. for amateur level oh, or, beautiful. you know, semi-pro event, it's you know. beautiful stuff. It's really exciting. I think it can go far as a pro event because it's so exciting for the fans. Maybe. Yeah. yeah it's maybe. like a Moscone environment, you know. Guys running around. I loved Corey's interview was, <laughs> Corey's just going to run. Funny. And then I'm just going to keep running. I'm not even going to shoot a ball because all you guys want to do is watch me did run. You, like, did you see his little practice six ball? 15 seconds. It's 15 seconds. Well, he makes two balls on the break because Darren gaffed the rack. <laughs> Darren's, Darren's like, that's got to be a world record, right? <laughs> yeah. 
Because he's like, I just make a ball in every shot. And, and he was making easy. two at a time. <laughs> two at a time he was making. It's funny. Yeah, slow. He's a little slow. There's Colin. Colin is playing unreal. He just beat our team. But you can hear the care in my voice. I don't care. My team played great. We wow, they did play great. And it was awesome. And it wasn't like it was. It wasn't a slaughter either. I mean, it, 13, you guys were 11. close. Yeah. Thirteen eleven. That you was guys anybody's match games. for sure. Anybody could win there. We had an awesome season. Super fun. Those guys were a joy to play with, and they're all hungry to play now. They're all just chomping at the bit nice. two of them are over there practicing on table one still <laughs> <laughs> nice i think everybody had a really good time i got a lot of good feedbacks first year i ran the league by myself last year i ran it with the help of jeff of course mm -hmm. but this year was the first solo year and it was it was good everybody seemed to have a really good time of course there's always a little drama here and there but you know nothing i major. think you pretty much got it right it's 90 yeah. 90 percent right are you guys yeah. making any changes for next year we're gonna keep wednesday thursday the same mm -hmm. at 2800 fargo okay and then we're gonna try monday tuesday at 3000 oh okay so two nights try monday two nights and two nights yeah we tried 3200 two years in a row didn't work we had seven teams and we had five it's getting worse it was like sml elite division well you saw that team mm -hmm. it was like team machine Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And they did. Like, there was a match in playoffs with nine ERO's consecutive back and forth teams. Really? Yeah. Hey. Or nine, eight out of nine games. The last six <laughs> to finish the match. <laughs> you see, this kind of pool gets a little nervy, Hill Hill. Those guys just break and run out. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, they're so experienced, right? It was a lot of fun to play and to watch. Like, and, and just playing and with those guys. Like, a lot of those 3,000 plus Fargo teams are just. Really great guys. There are guys like Derek Moore. Derek Moore's team won it. Derek and, and Norm and the boys. And, I mean, I was super happy to see them win it. They're all leather nice. pocket regulars. Yeah, you know? yeah. And they're just super nice guys. How much was and it for first? It was, well, I should know, but it was it was 57. It was 5,700. Nice. With only five teams is not bad. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Oh, and there's season payouts, right? First place in season, second, third. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Most ERO's, most points, top lady. James with this eight ball drains it. And they can come back here. Good, bad, and ugly. They finished as number six seed. Number five or number six seed. And they weren't a favorite to win the event, but definitely a force to be reckoned with. They're like right on the Fargo cap. They may even be over it right now. They were oh, okay. Because you freeze it. the Fargo at Christmas time, right? Yeah, I freeze it at the beginning of the year. If they're established. And, and established is what? 200? 200, yeah. And the reason is, if you didn't, then they would have to, like, sandbag to stay under. They would have to intentionally be losing if we didn't freeze the Fargo. Yeah. Or they would have to kick off their better player. <laughs> yeah. Say, sorry, you're too good. It, yeah, it can't be floating. Team. It can't be floating. you got to freeze at some point for sure. Never float it, yeah. You can see Warren's a regular here because he just dropped a ball in only one pocket there, and that's going to give him the ball that's stuck. You watch this. <laughs> he knows. He's played here before. See? <laughs> it's like table seven, it gets stuck in this back right corner. Table one, it's probably just trapped at the ball return by a chalk. <laughs> table two, I saw it disappear for like three weeks once. <laughs> Couldn't find it anywhere, a... and then it just came out. You need a uh, a ball retraction weekend where you just go under the tables and just clean out all the tracks. No doubt. I try to lift some of the slates over. You can lift them, move them sideways, and clean some of the tracks when we do the cloth in the summer. Oh, yeah, yeah. But typically with a diamond, you don't move the slate. You don't have to to recover it. Mm -hmm. The rail system all comes off, and you can stretch the cloth right under with the slate in place. Not like a valley where you got to lift it up, move it over. Right. Look at you. You're like a table mechanic now. It's almost like oh, I know what geez. I'm doing sometimes. How close was that? Nice effort from... I think that was Derek. It was Derek, I was going to say. Derek Fuller. Uh, uh, what's... Uh, Freddy Krueger? Because <laughs> of the shirt? I was trying shirt? to think. Of, I just kept saying Nightmare on Elm Street. But yeah, the shirt. Yeah. The shirt. Freddy Krueger over there just will kick that ball in. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't miss that by much. 
they've told me that Warren here, who just missed that ball on the right side table, has had an incredible tournament. James told me he's playing Unreal, which is nice. I've probably spent about 16 hours of instruction with Warren. Not recently, but over the years. Mm -hmm. He is an absolute go-getter. And the nicest guy you'll find in any pool room. Yeah, I'm not so saying nice. that. I say that a lot about a lot of people, but Warren is genuinely a very good human being. Super, super generous. Just a nice guy. And he's getting better every time I see him play. He it's nice to the, see he them. He puts the time in, though. Yeah, the, and a lot of these guys are still improving because they're still... They are putting in the time, you know. Bashing them around here, they got nothing going. <laughs> of course, as soon as you start talking about it, they miss. Yeah. So when are you opening registrations for next season? So I typically start taking deposits in mid-July. So if you want to register for next season you can message q sports live or you can message leather pockets facebook or if you have me on facebook you can message me or you can come into leather pocket and register that way so many ways if you have a team or even if you don't have a team i can typically usually find you a team so if they want to hold what night they want to play on so if they want to play wednesday and they want to make sure they get a wednesday spot because i only take eight teams per night mm-hmm then they can pay a deposit to hold the spot. I was doing 500 last year. I think I'll do 200 this year. It's fine. Pretty much any amount is good enough to hold the spot. These teams aren't going to yeah, give me yeah. 200 and then decide they don't want to play. Right? Yeah. Well, it's just a little something. You know, make sure that you're serious. Because mm -hmm. you have, know these pool um, players, they always commit without, <laughs> yeah. you know, anything on the line. And they could, you know, register for this and then find a league, you know, that's has a sanction that they like or something and then not play this one. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And then now all of a sudden I've held a spot for them and, you know, taking it away from another team or something. Also have summer league coming up soon too. So I'm taking registrations for that already. I have a poster here. I'll flash it up in between racks if we get time or at the end of the match. So payouts for this that we're watching here. Mm-hmm. How much is it for first first place? How many teams total? 14? Yeah, 14 teams. So we had six on the Thursday night, and we had eight on the Wednesday night, and then they combine for playoffs. So there's 14 total, and first place is $10,000. 10 grand. Nice prize pool. Yeah, these guys are fighting. The final is going to be fun. I think second is 62. Ooh. So it's a good enough chunk. It's worth playing for. Mm -hmm, you know? mm -hmm. It's almost 4,000. It'll be exciting. Even these last couple matches. Now, this match on the B side over there is worth $1,000. Yeah, there's something on the line. And this one here is worth a lot because the winner of the A side is guaranteeing themselves that 6200 Right. And the loser might only get $4,500. There's a, there's a gap there, quite a big gap. Yeah. I think it's forty five. do Don't quote me on that. <laughs> I had to adjust. Yeah, well, the difference of four or $500 a player, you know. That's a lot of money for anybody, but yeah. typically pool players don't have the most money. <laughs> I know some guys on my team were real happy that we like made it a little <laughs> further, right? They're going to school and stuff. Yeah, like, of tough course. Of they course. use every dollar. Look at this little draw shot on the right. He got way out of line, but I think he's perfect. You know, is that Julio? It's Julio, yeah. A little combo here? I think it oh, just no. drives by it. Oh. Oh, he's not happy about it. He's one he wears his heart on his sleeve every time. Hey? Yeah. <laughs> Left a hanger. See if Warren can do something here with it, though. He needs to make a good opening shot. I think it's this 12 ball goes by into what? the top left. But it's yeah. tricky because you got to hit slow. Oh, he's playing safe. The safety. I was actually going to say, I don't mind playing the safety here. Yeah. Like, if you're not confident... And making that shot? Yeah, that's better than just selling out for sure. But I think there's too many ways that he can make this ball hanging. Could jump it and combo it. He could mass say it to the rail first and clip it in. He might even have enough to just like jump combo. Swerve it a little, you know, like just a small. A little rail first, maybe even. Yeah, he's going to jump it. It's such a big ball, right? Yeah. 
and it's going to land over the other hole for him. You know, as good as Warren's been playing, I think he was supposed to take on that shot. He was supposed to pot the 12, and if he couldn't, then he was supposed to cut the 11 in the other corner. Both shots were very tough, but I think it was... Your opponent puts a ball over a hole, your safeties become way harder, right? Unless you can freeze mm -hmm, them. Mm -hmm. If you could freeze them there. I was just going to say, ooh. Got a little too excited there, maybe. Oh, definitely. He's one that gets excited, too. I've seen it from him. He gets too excited. That wasn't pressure or nerves. That was just excitement. I tell, I was telling my team all weekend, you got to separate the two. <laughs> Are you scared you're going to miss? No, you're just excited you're about to win. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's true. a difference between pressure and excitement. Most times we're just excited. <laughs> Most times. That was definitely excited. Poor Julio there. And Warren's going to punish him. He's got a good line here. And he's going to be sure. I like what he's doing. He could have just shot that 12 already, but he's going to, you know, find a, a proper route to kind of make sure. This is good. Smart shot. Although, now he needs to figure out where the 12's going when he makes this combo. Yeah, that's the problem with that combo is you get worried about where the 12's going, mm -hmm. right? I think he had to cut it more and send the cue ball to the left side rail, shoot the 12 in the other corner after. You got to think about the speed, right? You don't want to be too close to the work either yeah. after a combination like that. Well, extra chance for Julio here. Let's see if he can take it. It's a long shot. And he does well. I thought he might have hit a thick. But he used the whole pocket. It's a good shot. Gave him the eight ball. He did give him the eight. Yeah. Looks like, yep. Fair enough. I thought maybe he just missed it quick and I didn't see it. <laughs> Six, two, who ate my rice? Here's that summer league poster I was telling you guys about. Might be a little harder to see on your phone. Hopefully you're watching on your TV or your tablet. But we have Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday divisions available. Three player teams, 1800 Fargo cap. If you want in more information on that, you can send me a message or find it on our Facebook. I'll make a post about it tomorrow. So we got Don Collins breaking on the right. It's ERO leaders taking on each other because Don won the ERO race on Wednesday night division. He ran a lot of racks. He was playing real good. Came down to him and Jeff right near the end. Oh, and, yeah? And he ran out Jeff. Oh. <laughs> How great is that? <laughs> right? And then Jeff was in a race for the most points, and that almost lost it for him. The oh, run, wow. The run out against, but he won it by like three points. It's worth $200. Uh, yeah, cue ball. Cue ball gets kicked in. It just flew past everything. You don't see that too much, yeah. Hit the second ball good, but it just didn't catch anything on the way back through. It's good spread, too. You got to think Glenn's probably going to work his way out of that one from shooting the toughest shot first with ball in hand. Might be the 13. Smart little safety play on the left table there. Yeah, Freddie. I mean, Derek's got a tough shot here. I love that shirt. It's a great <laughs> shirt. These guys were skating the Fargo line too. Good, bad, and ugly. They're right on the limit. A couple teams were skating it like your team. Getting real close. Yeah. It depended who was playing, right? I know good, bad, and ugly. They were right there too. Nice shot from Derek. He let it leak out a bit, but... Yeah, well, I was just going to say, I think he's got a window there. Do you think he can see the 14? I think so. That would be a little bit unlucky, I think. Like, just by, like, a half an inch. It's so hard to tell on the camera, right? I'll open up this uh, thing after when, when ah. nobody's shooting on both tables. 
Okay, it's all good. It's probably better with it closed. They can't see us. They get nervous if they can see us streaming. Like they're not nervous enough playing for <laughs> a whole bunch of money. Just one more element of the game. That's right. Can see it. He's queuing it like he's got it. I believe so. Carlo just got to stay still. Still got to make another good shot after. Right? This shot is not a gimme either. But you do have two balls to get on, right? If you draw to middle, you have the shot in the side or the ball in the top left. You'd love to shoot the ball in the top left to get on the eight, though, right? Mm-hmm. Would have been nice to have a little bit of angle on this 12 ball. It looks to be fairly straight. I think he's got enough that the cue ball's going a bit to the to his left to get out to middle table. Yeah, just like oh, that. Yeah. Oh, wicked that was, stroke, too. That was a nice shot. Man, did he ever hit it good, yeah. Because now he's on both balls. Now you do whatever you like. But I think you shoot the side shot first. I was just going to say... But you, you can shoot sense. the you can shoot the other ball is fine. Just have to make sure that you draw right back to his hand and a little bit out to middle, right? Oh, he had forward angle. This is good. Just don't scratch on nope. the side, right? Oh, oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! <laughs> you wanted to make Ooh. sure he had angle. <laughs> He's got the angle. Oh, does he ever? A little bit of an adrenaline shot there, maybe. Oh, he was keeping his teammates on the edge of their seat there. That's for sure. But he's got the right angle. That's all that matters. Oh, it just became like a little bit harder too because now he needs to hit it slower. He's got to hold it a bit. But so I, close I to the rail. I think it's fine. Yeah. I think he's fine. He's cueing a bit out of the pocket too so he can see a bit of the right side of the ball. Yeah, that can Ooh. just happen though. That just happens. Anytime you got to hit the ball slow is like just a nightmare, right? That's when funny stuff happens. I always tell people, aim thinner. <laughs> if you got to roll the ball, you're going to hit it way thinner than you think. Because it's going to throw like way different, right? They call it cut-induced throw, but it's like, I think it's more dependent on speed. It should be called speed-induced mm. throw on a cut. <laughs> speed-induced cut throw. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the heart rate might have a little something to do with it too, right? You need to calm yourself down a little bit after you almost scratch. You almost put it right in the Just drink like, and now you're... Yeah. yeah. And now you're shooting out of the pocket. You're 150 beats a minute at least at that point. Ah, uh, that ball's easy to miss like that. Trying to like stay on that side of the 3-4. I questioned if the combo maybe went so that he didn't have to do that. Mm, it was close. Yeah, because trying to cheat it and stun follow it like that, it's so easy to rattle the ball. Now Carlo's got a freebie here. A little back cut into the top left. I think the cue ball goes nice and natural here. It misses the side pocket. Yep. Goes right near the first diamond by the side rail and just don't under hit it. Right side table, he must be looking at low ball and jacked up on the seven here, undecided. No, nope, overcut it a bit, but this cue ball is pretty good. He may have been Ooh. playing that. He may have been playing for that cue ball to be a two way. If he did, it's very, very smart. He's not gonna like his next shot, but smart can he do something here does the 4-1 combo go it does might it, does it push it even if maybe you tear him off the four yeah it was oh oh yeah <laughs> how about tickle the three four and then catch the one on the way in timing shot it's perfect <laughs> that's what i would have done brilliant did he call safe no, call. he didn't, did, did he? Did he just go sit down? <laughs> he may have just went and sat down. Carlo might be cutting this ball in the top right. Yep. Did he call safety there? Sure did. Why wouldn't you call that ball? Yeah, because it's a free shot. Yeah. So we call a free one. If it goes, great, you're on the three. If it doesn't go, he's screwed, right? Your safety is still there.
It's starting to rain out south. Yeah, we got a little sprinkle here this morning when I went to get some groceries around noon. 11.30. Did it rain out where you were? No, didn't. But we were looking at the sky on the way down just off McKnight there, and we're like, eh, it's raining over there. Are we supposed to get rain today? Apparently. Well, we didn't oh, catch any. wow. What a shot. Oh, my gosh. I thought he had that. I thought he hit it really good. That's a 10 out of 10 hard shot. He hit it real good. So is anybody alive in the YouTube chat today? I don't think so. Maybe they will be after I ask. It's sunny in Sydney. I bet it is, Peter. <laughs> you know who I saw the other day was Jim. Oh, is that right? Yeah, Jim popped in. He was playing on table one. I just came in He's with in some town? groceries. He was only here until... He, he was only here for like the weekend and he, he had already left. He was here for like two or three days or something. Okay. A uh, funeral, something like that. Oh, but no. He was, he was, he had lost a lot of weight, right? Yeah, but I would he imagine. he was actually looking pretty good. Good. Considering what he's been through, you know. I'm glad to hear it. Because Peter had told me about, about him when I talked to Peter in Vegas. Mm-hmm. I said, oh, I'll give him my best, you know. But then it was nice to see him playing. I was just like, oh, wow. That's How good. great is pool though? Like when you can, you know, and he's like, no, my doctor told me like, I gotta be moving and stuff. So this is great. Right. Perfect. Ah, well, it's, it's good to hear that he's well enough to travel and, and play. Mm -hmm. That's good. It was a wedding. I knew it was, I knew it was close, Peter. <laughs> Funeral, <laughs> wedding, same thing, right? Same, same, same. <laughs> Sign your death. <laughs> Sign your own death certificate, the wedding and the funeral. <laughs> yeah, he said uh, he's going to start liquidating some of his cues. <laughs> oh, I said, yeah? how many you figure you have? He's like, not that many, maybe only a dozen. <laughs> only a dozen. They're all like super high end, right? Yeah. <laughs> Keith, awesome. Good to hear, buddy. Keith, have you signed up for summer? Nobody will. <laughs> These guys will talk them into it. I already have quite a few teams signing up, so I think it's going to fill pretty quick. We're only going to take... Uh, I, I could take more than eight teams, so we won't cap it. We'll maybe cap it at 16 teams per night, but I don't think we ever get that many. So lock no rush, you spot, guys. Lock but lock it spot. in if you want. Yeah. Norm's in there. There's a champ. Norm was captain of the team that won last weekend. Team five pack. Those guys played so good in the final. What are you spending your winnings on, Norm? New cloth for the table at his condo. <laughs> Just kidding. Don't do that. Come play here. We'll get new cloth in summer. Okay, Carlo on the left's got a whole bunch of extra chances here. This one's a good one. Look oh, out. Oh, moving the up. Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> it was almost like that game was always going to end that way because wow. it, it was it was looking like it wasn't going to end any other way. It's one of those things, right? Well, Derek was pretty perturbed that he gave him that shot too. He just kind of <laughs> missed, his, uh, missed his shot and gave him shape on the 13. Funny how that works. I didn't see that coming though. No, I thought I, the eight was going to move, but not move right into the side pocket. It's going that direction, but he didn't need to hit it that hard. It's just adrenaline, right? Just excited. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. he wasn't supposed to be back at the table. No. To be fair. They're playing for a lot of money. It's just a lot of excitement happening, a lot of adrenaline. So it's easy to over hit a ball. It's a lot easier to over hit it than it is to under hit it. If you watch these guys, they typically under hit a lot of balls. Or sorry, over hit a lot of balls. Adrenaline will get them. Let's see if Don Collins can claw this one back. All of a sudden we got a match from four nothing. It could be six four right here if Don gets out. Ball in hand, only four balls and the eight. Shouldn't be a problem. The ERO leaders at the table there. Ruel racking up on the left. See if he can show us why he was the runout leader. Well, 
that's not where he wanted to be. That's not it. Now he's shooting a tougher shot than he wanted. Just got to be precise with the speed here to get on the 11. Nah, that's pretty good. Shoot the 13 first, I mm -hmm. suppose. Mm -hmm. In a perfect world, you're shooting the 13 as out ball, though. Yeah, for shape for the 8, I was looking at that, but... I don't think he can do it now. Got a little, got a little out of shape there. Yeah, you just you don't panic in these spots. You shoot the thirteen, you shoot the eleven, you shoot the eight in the same pocket as the thirteen. Yep. Sometimes you get too caught up in that one pattern that you had, and then you get stubborn and just gotta move to Plan B. That's right. Always reevaluate. Oh, he went all the way across. I didn't think he would do that. I thought he would try to hold it more, a little more spin, just hold it. The back and forth, I think, was just as hard as to hold it. Is he going to crash into the eight here? Yeah, that might be the best choice. Oh, Ooh, no. That, I feel like that's a big game for them. Can't really let that one slip. I think he knows it, too. That's why I see him standing there still. <laughs> Knew it. Keith McGinnis playing... Two hidden spot. Well, one one player's pool league, one hidden spot league. That's fair. Still had an amazing day at LP yesterday. <laughs> He'll come around to LP in the future, you know. Don't worry. They all do. 7-3. <laughs> and they're yelling over there now. I think it's the other match. Oh, it is. Oh, oh there must have been some excitement <laughs> going on over there. <laughs> It sounds exciting. They're having fun. That's good. Derek Anderson at the left side table here while I flash up our sanctioning bodies there, CCS and BCA this year. We added CCS. Of course, Ted Harms, good friend of mine, good friend of everybody's. I mean, he's such a lover of pool. It was a no-brainer when I asked him about it. He said, yeah, of course. So it gives everybody another option. And we have a great tournament coming up with CCS is the Western Canadian Championships in two weeks. How about a week and a half, I suppose. Yeah, first week of May. And that's at Acadia Rec Center in right here in Calgary, Alberta. Great tournament. Nine ball singles, eight ball singles, scotch doubles, team nine ball, team eight ball, juniors. There's a shootout for a whole bunch of cash. Franchise shootout, I'll post that one soon. Derek Anderson has had a spectacular year or two. He runs out off of Ruel's dry break there. Nice out. So if you guys have any juniors that have played or like the game or want to show some interest, it's free to play that junior tournament at Westerns on the Sunday starts at noon may 5th anyone can play it's divisionalized so there's two different divisions a 17 and under and a, a 14 and under a 13 and under and the winner of each division gets a queue sponsored by raid and falcon and there will be prizes for everybody as well like chalk holders and queue claws stuff like that my boys are so excited to play they love that event. Oh, Ryder, too. He's super pumped. My my boy's super pumped, too. Can't wait. What He's a great way to get him off the video games. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anything to get him away from the screen for a bit. That's right. It's so good for, like, hand-eye coordination, you know. So many good things about it. Pool's so great. Sport etiquette. Mm -hmm. Being social, social. Actually talking to people, to, like, to their face. That's right. <laughs> To their face. To their face. I just realized I was going to count the game number they're on, you know, so people know what the match, like, but I don't think it really matters that much because, you know, if the score says 7 4, then it's 11 games. So they're on game 12 13. It's almost like self explanatory, but I'll try to count it over there too. That way we get an idea, you know, 
how many games are left. Who ate my rice? Over the halfway mark now to 13. And what's up, Lou? Lou from New Jersey in the house. Of course. Still nobody in the YouTube chat. It's <laughs> watching. It's Sunday. They're watching on their TV, right? That's right. Can't chat on the TV. That's why you watch it on your TV and then you have it also for the chat on the phone. Yeah, of course. But they're probably watching some other pool on their phone. <laughs> I think Ultimate Pool has started, actually. I think they said it started up at 4, Derek said, so it would have started right about now. And there might have still been some snooker just happening. Might have just been ending. World snooker started. see don't want to speak too soon but yeah of course i didn't even say warren was looking good i just <laughs> thought it i just thought like hey he's got a good look here but i was like i'm not gonna say it because he's yeah. gonna miss yeah <sighs> just thinking the it. power is too strong this was not good <laughs> the power is too strong with you but i feel bad because I, I like warren <laughs> who doesn't like warren such a nice guy uh, Freddy, see if Freddy Krueger can punish him here. I mean, Derek Fuller. Derek's a nice guy, too. He's going to ref the Huntington's tournament. Oh, nice. Volunteered to referee. Yeah. Um, so we have to um, we have to look up new BCA rules. He said, I went to the website yesterday, look up BCA rules. It still says ball in hand off the break is behind the line. <laughs> I'm like, honestly, I just looked at that, too. Because really? before playoffs, I'm like, oh, I'll just, you know, freshen up on some of the rules maybe. Yeah, yeah. And it, for some reason, it still says that. And it says most recently updated in 2019. Oh, like, really? Like, what? <laughs> Have we been playing the wrong rules? No. Because I just went to BCA Vegas and everybody played ball in hand anywhere. Yeah. Right? So I don't know what's going on there. But we'll figure it out before the Huntington's tournament. <laughs> yeah, I was... um thinking about uh, TDing that tournament, but I have some family stuff going on that weekend, so unfortunately I won't be able to do it, but I'm going to stop in and hang out anyway. Well, with 20 teams paid, that's already really great. It's already 60 players supporting the event. You just love seeing that. I'm looking forward to the run. I walked last year because I didn't think I could run the 5K this year. I can run you ready? the 5K. Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, yeah you've, been, you've been prepping for that I'll, for a while, I'll hey? I'll be more ready. Mike told me he's going to run the half marathon. Good for Mike. Right? That's 21 kilometers. That's crazy. <laughs> I get to seven and my knee hurts, and I'm like, that's it. I'm done. 21 is three times that. <laughs> yeah. I can't even. Like, five will be fun. Anything more than five is just suffering. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I can barely make it up my stairs. <laughs> I, can't, I can't do it. But good for you. Good for you. <laughs> I think I told Georgios and Martin, too, that we'll all run together. And, you know, if we get tired, then we'll just stop and go for a beer, catch the breath. And then, <laughs> and then we'll, yeah, yeah. And then we'll just start going again, right? Yeah. But I thought, nah, they can walk together. <laughs> I want to run the whole way. <laughs> yeah. No, it'll be fun for you guys. Oh, we brought the kids last time, too, and it was a great time. That's a good way to, to get involved in the cause, even if, you know, maybe can't afford to donate or things like that. It's okay. Just uh, show up and get out there with some friends. Yeah, yeah. Tell people you're there. That's enough, right? Just recognize and uh and get some more some more eyes on what's happening you know good shot from warren there he's on the wrong side of this 11 but he won't mind either side works and then he's going to need to shoot the nine and i always tell players you're way better off trying to bank that eight if it banks then trying to shoot the nine and break it out and guess where the cue ball and the eight mm -hmm, and the one mm -hmm. and the seven and 
So if you can just line up a, a relatively, you know, makeable bank, then you can predict that a lot better than trying to slash the breakout, right? But it looks like, you know, most of the time there he was looking at the nine and then the breakout, right? Which is okay. It's just I always think banking a ball is going to be more predictable. Well, this is a little interesting because then now who is that that's playing on the left? Mm, I can't tell who it is. Maybe Jose Lito. Kind of forces him to have to take the one ball, and the one ball is his breakout ball for the yeah, seven. Yeah, so yeah. I wonder if the seven goes like without it. It might. Maybe it goes. But Maybe the shape it. on it's a little tricky, right? Because you've just got such a small window. Yeah. Not that it doesn't go, but it's just a small window. Yeah, I don't think you can shoot the ball near the left side. It's too thin. You're losing the cue ball too much. So you're right. The one is the only shot here. And he, and he probably doesn't want to shoot it. I don't blame him. He had a plan. He had a plan for that seven ball. Yeah, I mean, there's always a pretty r routine safety over there from the seven. You just don't let him see this ball near the side, the nine. Who ate my rice is in tough on the right table there too. Yeah, I was kind of half watching Mark. Leia there is, he's got two balls in that cluster, I think. Is it two? I think it's Six two. Six and seven them. maybe? It's a six and a three. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a six and a three. I think they both have two balls in that cluster on the right side rail. Neither one of them is going to be in a rush to move them. That's for sure. But I do think Derek should do it now. Derek should be making this ball and then trying to get angle on that that ball near the top right corner to go into this stuff. Sometimes you got to do it, right? You can't just wait around forever. He was Ooh. he was in no rush to do anything either. <laughs> yeah, he's not heartbroken if that didn't no, go. No, that's yeah. right. Let's see what Mark does here. I don't think he can shoot this and draw back into them. I think you're just queuing too close to that stripe. Maybe not. Hard to tell from here. I don't know. I think... Oh, he tried oh, to. Pumped it. Look at this. He's going to leave a tough one here. Long one. A long, tough one. Yes. Probably worst case for him was he made that ball somewhere else by accident. Now mm -hmm. he's got one less soldier and no ball down there to break that stuff out. This is good news for Derek here. If he rolls this in, he's going to have the proper angle. Yeah, just roll this. What is that 10 ball or 12 ball? What is that? Roll this ball in. Leave yourself a little bit of angle to go into that little cluster. I think he's got it here. And lots of angle is good. Like this is perfect. You just got to try to figure out what's going to happen. Don't just bash into them and hope. Oh, no, that's not good. That's no, not good a strategy. That's not ideal, but it's probably it's why I'm here. definitely seen a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it a lot. I saw it too much. And actually, I did it a couple times. It worked out great. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you're doing an educated guess, too. That's the thing is, like, even on these little shots, it's really hard to control where those four balls are going to go. But you can guess. And you can try to figure it out, right? And at least have a half an idea. Are these guys having a Canadian standoff here or what? Yes. No, you shoot first. No, you shoot first. <laughs> no, no. You go. No, please, you. So I like this. It's exactly what he's doing. Don't guess. Try to find a spot. Try to be precise if you can. Don't just hammer away and hope something good happens. So he, he's trying to find a good spot there. It's between those balls. You don't want to go into the back of the 11 or that first stripe closest to him. Because you're going to move everything, but you're probably not going to get a shot. If you can split those two stripes, that's probably your best chance. One of them should bank across, if not both of them. Should bank across towards that corner where he's standing. Gonna kind of like kiss. Oh, what's he playing here? Safety instead. No, is he? Yeah, this is this is not the right play. Oh yeah, because I would have went into that for sure. Well, your opponent. When are you gonna get a better chance, right? Mm -hmm. Your opponent's not just gonna break them open for you and give you ball in hand, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, and you know, he, 
So Mark's going to leave him in tough here. Oh, he's just going to keep leaving him tougher and tougher. Yeah. You're not going to get a better chance, yeah. really. Because 12 Odds balls aren't in a great spot either. Like, you might be even worse. And now he is, right? Now, he's, now he can't see any ball. And Mark's got his balls out and open. Smart how Mark played that shot. Mm -hmm. Most would play that much softer. He played it at a good speed to get the six out in the open over the hole. That was very smart. And what is Derek seeing Derek's doing here? rail first through the gap. No. Oh, no. he's Oh, I see the strategy. Foul. Doesn't work, though. It, this doesn't work often. But you see how the it just flip-flopped there real quick, hey? He had a chance to go into those balls and break it out. And now he's given ball in hand. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. like, you got to... I preach this too much. Like, take the chances when you get them. Don't wait for better ones. Yeah. You got a chance. Take it. Well, now Mark's got ball in hand here. How do you like to play this? Oh, he's going to go in this way? Yeah, go in behind the six. Yeah, right there. You hit right there with the cue ball, and you're going to be on the six or the three. I kind of like taking your ball in hand and going short side on the three to the top left with a little bit of angle to open up the six. We kind of push the six towards the towards yeah. the top right a bit it's harder to get it free i can see why he's going this way though your way can work too for sure oh warren rolls that ball in nice lookout uh, yeah oh, man. well i mean the three nice three play. is a breakout ball now but but he's not he's on tough he needs he's another tough. safety yeah it's got lots to hide though but yeah that was a, a bit of a curious way to hit it nice from warren there claws out to within two Seven fives, anybody's match for sure. And who ate my rice? Probably they came out looking like they were going to run away with this, and now they're thinking about it. Yeah, it was an early 5 1. That's all you got to do to your opponents, make them think about losing. Sometimes they just come out, they're thinking about nothing but winning. You can't have that. <laughs> this is the A side final, mm -hmm. correct? So this is going to guarantee third place. Second, second Win place winner money? will guarantee second, yeah. And they're going to be real hard to beat twice, no matter who it is. That's a really quality shot there from Mark. Okay. Good cover. I'm not sure there's anything good Derek can do here other than kick into this stripe in the open and just leave stuff tied up, right? You can go two rails into it or one. I kind of like one because you're likely to push it over the hole. Maybe block something. Good intentional foul again. He's kind of like, he's seeing it like that. Mm -hmm. you know, he might just like pop the three and let him bank the six. No, I'm not sure what the play was there. Just, because uh, now he can bank the six, but he has a free shot at it. Because now the three is kind of plugging stuff up. That's true. Everything's that's still true, tied yeah. up. Yep and leave him right over here and he has nothing anyway, right? I think uh, Derek missed a beat there. I'm not sure what he was trying to do, but it didn't work. Interesting three. to know if that 11 slips in between the rail and the three. Yeah. Yeah, that is... I don't think we're going to get to find out. I think Mark makes his bank. This guy plays probably 20 games of one pocket every week. He banks the ball real good. You see him lining it up nicely. Doesn't just get up and rifle it. I'm going to try to find a good line. I like putting the cue ball closer, though. A little bit closer than this. On the other side of the sticker, you know? You can get a little closer. Nails the bank. You see how he left him nothing there, too? Like, mm -hmm. if he didn't make the bank, he's leaving absolutely nothing. It's got a little bit of angle here on the three just to come out. Kind of middle table. Yeah, middle is so good. Middle is your best friend. You're going to have so many shots from middle table all the time. Don't shoot the seven first, though. You don't need to do that. But he's going to. <laughs> no, he's not, is he? Yeah, he's going to do it. It's okay this way. I just don't Such think it's necessary. Much more of a, a tougher shot, I thought. Um, getting to the eight from the seven, I think, is easier. Right? Nails it, though. Nails it. Yeah. Fearless. Comes out perfect for the three. That's a little bit of fearless and fearful because you're trying to save the hanger for last, mm -hmm. but then you, you know, so you shoot the tougher shot, but yeah, it worked. And 
Don with a tricky little table on the left, but he's very good at these kind of little. Yeah, he's good at picking away at these. Yeah, pick them apart. He's a very smart player. Look out. This has got to go Oh, it's there. tight. It's gotta tight gotta to the it. work. Oh, he got there. He got there. I did this earlier, too. I just got real close to it. Got super lucky. Thinking about a ref. Derek just poking his face in there just to make sure he can see the space in between. Okay, I'm going to go ref. Okay, you go ahead. And makes a better door than a window. Looks like it was good though. Doesn't hurt to be sure. You make a better door than a window though, Ben. Yeah. <laughs> see that. Ben didn't want the viewers to see just in case he made the, the wrong call. It's yeah. fine. It's fine. I get it. Steph knows me too well. <laughs> He shot away from it. I think Derek thought he might shoot straight at it. Oh, yeah. Derek being a ref, he's like, he would have known not to call me or a ref if he knew he was going to shoot away from it yeah. like that. There was just no need for a ref there. It's one of those ones, as soon as I see him shooting away from it, don't really have to watch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're fine. <laughs> Look out, cue ball. Oh, no, oh, no. I, oh, uh, I thought it was going to sit there. Julio having a bit of a rough one this match, eh? Balls aren't rolling his way. Don will probably punish him for that. He's got to move some balls, but ball and handle help. You have a dinner to go to tonight, right? I do. What time is that at? Um, whenever we get there, the boys are at their birthday party. So when they... Their aunt and uncle will drop them off back here, and then we'll just take off. It'll kind of be an after dinner time. I think they're they're getting Costco hot dogs for the for dinner, <laughs> but I won't have these at dinner by then. So yeah, dinner's not a bad idea today. I might yeah. have dinner today too. That's a good idea. <laughs> I didn't have dinner yesterday. I don't know if I did either. Yeah, no, I don't think you did. So Dawn breaks out some balls, but the four doesn't quite free up. It goes into the same pocket the two's going to go, and it goes into the bottom left. I think the bottom left is the pocket I'd be looking at later on. But the six on the side could lead him to the four in the same hole. We'll see. Might be the play now. Or the six in the corner leads you over there. Yeah. Let's see what he does. What we got here on the right? We got Mike kicking at a ball. Kicking, comboing a ball. Oh, wow. Did he play that? No, he didn't play that. Super shot either way. All right, good, good little safety. Nobody in a rush to do anything over there. Stripes look a little messy over there. Just hope for solids. <laughs> uh, Don takes on the six and hits it pretty bad. That's not the best per performance from Don. He's typically hitting the balls pretty smooth. I didn't mind taking the six to the side and then with the angle on the five to end up short side on the four and mm -hmm. shoot the, the four ball into the bottom left. That's, I that's what I thought too, yeah, yeah. I didn't mind that. But maybe from our view he didn't really have the five that well. Or the six in the side was maybe just a little funny. Sometimes it... No, it can't be. Yeah, I think it was fine. We see everything perfect from here, Oh, ben. yeah, that's right. Yeah, these angles are perfect. <laughs> see how close I got the split screen? Grant would be proud. He would be proud. I was actually I was noticing that earlier. <laughs> I'm like, hey, that's that's pretty good. <laughs> the colors are hard. A little Just tough. Because the lighting is different on one side than the other. We figured it out. This one gets the lights from above the bar. Oh, I see. Yeah, Those yeah, two yeah. lights that are above the bar. So that so the one table on the left is always a little brighter, or the colors are a little cleaner almost. 
But this lines up pretty good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that bottom corner. That might have been the best, the best I've ever done. Look at this kick. Holy smokes, he kicked it in again. He called it that time, right? <laughs> How good is that shot? He's been playing great. Yeah, like I said, Mike's just had such a great year. Julio with a good look here. On the left side table, just got to trickle this one in. Shoot the eight in the same pocket. This lay is real nice for him. Ooh, almost a little thick. Mike playing a combo here, I think. Oh, who ate my rice? Kind of regaining that momentum they had if, with a four game lead here. And now we're at games 15, 16. Looks like Mike played a smart shot there. I thought he would go after the 4-6 with the safety to break stuff out. He needed to move the 4-6, so why not do it with the safety? Good shot there. I think uh, Chris Demir's in the chat there. He was the only other one other than me to play both leagues. He played last weekend too. Oh, is that Super right? Super long weekend last weekend, too, yeah. Diehards. Yeah. You guys are diehards. Well, Pocket Predators, they needed a player, and they picked up Chris about halfway through the season. Well, what a pickup, because he taught them a lot. He really helped them. Of course, Chris is always super helpful, so he was giving them pointers all season. It was great. Nice. That's what it's all about. Oh, yeah. Okay, Mike kicking out a ball here. Looks like just kick, hit the four, play safe. That's a good shot. Might have left this stripe in the right side pocket, but it's not easy. He may have to go for it, though. I don't see anywhere to hide now, really. Derek Fuller to break on the left. Oh, oh, wow. And he nudged the 10 out beautifully, too. See that little bump? I think, it, you know, honestly, I think it was just the speed that killed that shot. A little softer, I think it drops. Yeah. Man, Derek came with the super follow-through on that one. Super followed through the cue ball straight in the side, but his follow-through was crazy. I'm going to watch this on the YouTube replay. He just ripped it. Looked like Johnny Archer with that follow-through. <laughs> watch it on the YouTube. He was like falling over halfway through the table. He's like way out there. Bam. Look at that. <laughs> he, he really yeah, followed he through did. there. Yeah, he did. He did it good. <laughs> yeah. Ball in hand, but not the easiest table over there on the left. Mike looking good on the right. Good angle on the six. Three leads into the eight easy. One good shot required. His team needs him here, too. I don't think they can win without Mike playing good here. This who ate my rice. They're real tough to beat. I think even though they didn't finish first place, I think everybody knew they were going to be one of the ones to beat here. Does he get there? He does. Wow. Just scrapes by that 14. Uh, he's on not a good angle here. You have to be very precise with this back and forth. You gotta kind of come up a little short. Can he just hold it? I don't think so, right? No, I I go back and forth on this one. Oh, he overcut it, crashed and burned. Q hits the floor. <laughs> uh, not the easiest out here, and a lot of pressure because you put the ball over the hole, right? Yeah. It's like gotta play one pocket with four of these balls. So what do you do on this right hand table here? Can it shoot, shoot the, the pocket first. a little bit? I think I shoot the 11 into the combo first. And I hope the 11 clears the way, then I shoot the 9 after, right? 
I'm looking at that shooting that first. 10 ball into the side, just cheat the pocket a little bit and going into that little three ball cluster, opening yeah, it up. That's not a bad idea either because you always have that hanger, right? Yeah. Or shoot this and then shoot the ball on the side. I think the nine goes. I don't think you need to move it. Maybe. So I think that's what, that's what he's thinking is shoot that shoot the ball. Oh, no. He's going to shoot this. Come around, shoot that ball near the eight is a bit of a troubled ball, right? It's a lot of trouble now. Mm -hmm. This is like the pressure of them having a ball over a hole makes the back door run out a lot harder. If that, if his ball is on the end rail, the guy probably runs out every time because he's not so worried about where his cue ball's going. You know, might have to play safe here. Can cut the eleven in, but it's tough. Yeah, I I kind of like the safety here. Only because the eight and that stripe are blocking a lot of the one rail kicks coming off that left yeah. side rail. Just tuck that cue ball in behind the nine fifteen, I think that yeah, is. Exactly, yeah. You try to pot this and you don't get it right, you lose the game. Well, not often you lose the game. <laughs> not every time, but most times. Yeah, he was he was on board with our plan. So you he heard can us. see there's really no one rail kick to the left side here. Mike's can go over and look and then and then go, wait a second. So I don't hate the swerve here, the mass A, because if you don't if you don't bend it enough and you catch the end rail, it might still have enough right siding to spin into mm, the three. Mm -hmm. And do rail first. Yeah. And if you try to jump it, your cue ball is going like flying. You have no idea where your cue ball is going, right? A lot of us are playing with carbon shafts now, and the mass say is harder to judge. It takes more practice. It took me a long time to figure it out. I think I have it close now, but okay. it's still very, very tricky to figure out. Who do we got playing here in this? Uh, this is pool? Corey and Melling. Ooh. This would be a great, great match to watch. You know, being like a having a heart disease run in my family i was like the happiest guy to see darren appleton win that shootout yeah so good for him it's it hasn't been that long for him no. to recover like that and then to win that format <laughs> like the quickest format you know not conducive to a guy who just went through that and doesn't have all his energy back oh know? it's so good to see him playing and playing well though incredible pool is such an incredible game like that he says he's been feeling good so that's awesome this is why I love pool, you know. It's like if you were a tennis player and that happened, your career is over. It's you just true. can't. You'll never have the energy to, to do it, you know. Yeah. You just can't do it. And that goes for tennis is only one example of 100. But there's a lot of other sports you wouldn't be able to do it anymore. And Darren's still at the top of the game. That tournament was tough yeah, to win. Yeah, he killed it. <laughs> and, and won it against Chris Melling, who is like a seasoned pro at Beat this Melody. format. He's right? down to Roberto in the final, too, hey? Yeah. Like 4-1 and 5-2. Oh, my gosh. That's crazy. <laughs> I didn't get a chance to watch it. I'm going to go back and watch it. Um, what got me hooked on this whole format thing was watching Tyler and Cleve's very first opening match. How good was that for the for the game? Opening right? match on the first day. It's it was so like, great. It's almost like they drew it up, you know? They're yeah. like, hey, you guys got to dog it a little bit. Make sure it goes hill. <laughs> Make sure you play a shootout. Yeah. Like, it couldn't have worked out better in like, what a dream start to the yeah, event. Yeah, it was I heard good. Grant was talking about it with the Yeah. In that match he did. Yeah, you do, you do have to go back and watch it if you didn't watch it. Go back and watch that one. I didn't get to see it yet. I just heard them talking about it. Yeah. I just happened to tune in and I'm like That's Grant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I better share this quick. Yeah. Yeah, go back and watch that match cuz it kind of, that match had like all the elements. Yeah, that's And great. because it was the first match, they kind of walked through like the the rule differences yeah, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. So touching ball. Yeah, it kind of gave you a good a good idea of Touching ball is a weird one, folks. You got we got to maybe get used to that one. <laughs> or it's going to bite us a couple times. Is he on the 8? Don't know if he is. I don't know. That's tight. I don't think so. But the bank is there. I think he's got the edge. And the but bank is definitely there then. And and this bank lay is not bad. Oh no, he's coming around to look at the cut angle. Maybe just lots of right siding. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. If it's even questionable, you probably just bank it. But he might not hate just leaving it there, right? Just put it over that hole. 
Oh. oh, like a dream. No questions asked. Oh, and the stream froze. Look at that. That's back now. Sorry about that. Connection's been weird. Uh, internet's been weird in here. Tournament it's director's having a problem, too. That's that <laughs> rain. It's whatever this bad weather is coming overhead. I love watching Chris Melling play. Yeah, he's really good. Yeah, he's uh, one of the funner ones to watch. Oh, looking good here on the right side table. Does he give him the eight? I think, no. He's shooting this eight. I thought he was giving it to him for a second, but. Who ate my rice? Man, these guys are just so tough to beat every year. They play so good. You know, they got all this Nix Q Innovation equipment. How do they ever miss? We were playing uh, Warren and Buck's team last match and mm -hmm. played a safety on Buck. And he, I'm like, yeah, that's pretty good safe. And then he goes and gets the Nix jumper. And I was like, ah, crap. <laughs> <laughs> and sure enough, just super effortless. Like, it looked like he didn't even hit it. He just got over the ball, no problem. Just cut it in. Just yeah. Run, you know, make the eight after, no big deal. I think Nick is probably tired of me advertising him. He's so busy. <laughs> and, of course, always shout out to DCL Labor and Contracting, my good friend Ben DeWolf. Always helping out around here. They did a good job yesterday morning helping me get the room ready and tables all cleaned. And nice. Place was looking real nice. Got a lot of good, good compliments. So that's game 17, 18. This uh, game count was way more important in VNEA. <laughs> yeah. I do like my personal preference. I do like ball count. Yeah, me too. I feel like ball count puts a little bit more pressure on the teams because not only about the wins, you know, every ball matters. I think it's more exciting. Mm hmm Yeah. Because well, you, might, you might have to win the last game 10-1 or something. Yeah. You know, and that's exciting. And when you run out, when you break and run out, you needed to win 10-1 and you won 10-1. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. There's few better feelings in the world than that. You know, your teammates are pumped. It's not quite the same as just winning the game. Right? Yeah. Well, in that way, your, your run outs mean something, mm -hmm. you know? I'm very much for the run outs meaning something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I hate to say it, but Warren's looking pretty good on this left side table. <laughs> Let's see how strong this curse really is. He's got a one tricky positional shot. It's getting on that ball by the green six. But he's got these two balls to get like precise and eh, not so precise. Mm, see, I just there. wanted to test it there and it's, and it's strong with Warren curse is on so is this ultimate pool is this the final eight maybe or is this like the semi-final eight or? or 16 yeah somewhere along those lines yeah it might be 16 you're right so i think chris played appleton first right in the 32 or did Corey play appleton i'm not sure i know it was one of them so i think they're pretty close together still I know we, a couple of those BC boys made some noise. That's always good to see. Mm -hmm. I didn't see how uh, how uh, Folan did. Did he play? I believe so. It was uh, Steve Folan. It was Pickering. I know Jay Copeland. I didn't know the other guy. Well, I, I didn't know his name. Didn't recognize it. But he made the final 32 with uh, Simon. They were in the same bracket. He played Chris Reinhold first match. Oh, I see. Yeah. Lost to him. So Chris was just, you know, beating up on those BC guys. Don going to... Oh, I thought he was going to draw it and break out the nine. But I guess the nine maybe goes in the top left. That right side table. They need him here. You got to keep them off the hill. It doesn't really matter what the score is. Just keep them off the hill is the big thing.
Thanks, Blake. And thanks for playing. Let's see what Don's doing here. Looks like I think that 13 by his arm there, I'm pretty sure it goes into the top right. If it doesn't, he can get on it somehow. Billy Thorpe versus Tyler Steyer next, they're saying. Ooh, that'll be a good one. Mm. First Billy's semis. been playing great. Laura said it's the first semis. So the other semis is Billy versus Tyler. Winner plays each other. Huh, okay. already down to the semis. That was quick. That well, was quick. Well, you know what I really love about this whole Ultimate Pool format is that they know exactly how long each match is going to take because it's timed so, so they build out yeah. the entire schedule and they're able to time it like down to the minute mm -hmm. which is excellent you never have those matches that run over Nobody take too long behind. you and, know and you want to know how pool gets on tv that's how it's because true. tsn isn't willing to give us a time slot that we don't know when that it's going to end yeah that floats like world series of poker got it from tsn but how big are they? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I remember trying to record World Series of Poker. Well, it ran way longer than they ever thought it was going to. Yeah. So I couldn't record it. There was no recording. It just yeah. ended. Yeah. But they ain't giving that to pool anytime no. soon. So we have to have, we need to be able to go to TSN and say, this match is going to take an hour. Yeah. It will be over by this time but, Sunday. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Because only big sports like tennis and stuff are getting those kind of time slots, right? Yeah. Tennis will get it too. They'll get like a two hour slot, but mm -hmm. that match could take three or four, right? But I mean, those are like professional sports those that have been on the air for are, yeah. decades. Exactly. You know, since the beginning of time. Whereas, you know, you're trying to get something on now. We need, boy, you yeah. need to have it down to the yeah. letter. Yep. And that's how you get sponsors involved because you know exactly how much air time there's going to be. Like, it's, yeah. And to be fair, I mean, like, their production has been amazing. I thought the production was really, really well done. Really well done. Uh, I messaged Grant after the after his stream match. Said he, I told him he did a good job because he did. Mm -hmm. And I told him I thought the production was great. Yeah. Camera angles were nice. The, Very professional. The volume was good. Everything was good. The only they had a problem with the shot clock once for a match, yep. and it delayed the whole thing by like an hour or something. They had a big problem with it. But that's not new. No. Nope. Matchroom had a problem with shot clock. Predator had well, a problem with shot clock. It happens. Shot right? clock Those... is a problem. <laughs> yep. Especially when you have one that's adjusting. You have an adjusting shot clock. So at 10 minutes left in the match goes 15 seconds. You got to, you know, it's not so easy. They're doing really great things though. Like I'm a huge ultimate pool fan. Yeah, I think it's, it's great. And who doesn't want to like go to an event and know your schedule ahead of time? So that you can plan your day, plan your meals, plan your get-togethers, the sightseeing, or whatever. I mean, it's. I mean, every so event great. you go to, the big ones in Vegas, for example, and you show up, and next thing you know, you're. Well, I have no idea when we play. The schedule's not up yet. I was just standing there waiting for them to call my table, literally. Yeah. Just waiting. Yeah. Because the other matches are taking too long, and I, like my match has been up for half an hour. But I'm standing there anxiously awaiting. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, you're, you're on the TV table in the other room. It's like, oh, thanks. Thanks. <laughs> <sighs> Five hours later, <sighs> you know, you never know when you're going to get called too, right? Yeah, it was, it was not a fun moment to be standing there waiting for that table assignment. Yeah, you know? yeah. And it happens at every big event. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it wasn't new to like that one Predator event. It was nope. just... It's part of pool because we can't predict the times. That's this is so important for pool. I love what they're doing, and it's exciting. Like this, just the difference in the format. It makes it exciting. They're on to something. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I talked to the guy a little bit in Vegas too. It must have been Simon, right? Yep. And uh, yeah, he he has the same thoughts that I do. Like, because as Canadians, we're getting no support from the government. We're just pool bums, mm -hmm. right? We're like, we're like poker players to them. Mm -hmm. But if pool is in the Olympics then I would be an Olympic athlete and I'd get paid by the Canadian government to mm -hmm. play pool. Mm -hmm. They have some, uh, they have some ideas. They want to start changing some things, making I, an impact, right? Well, I think they're the guy, as Simon said, the only way we're getting pool in the Olympics is eight ball. And I was like, thank goodness. Somebody finally said this Yeah. because if it ever, if a Q sport does make it, it's going to be snooker first. It's going to be three cushion. 
Nobody wants to watch nine ball or 10 ball. They don't even know what it is, mm -hmm. but the whole world knows how to play eight ball pool, right? If not just from their cell phone game. It's true. <laughs> so I'm um, glad we're playing eight ball too. You guys can watch uh, ultimate pool. You can watch, this isn't that ultimate, but it's pretty great. <laughs> <laughs> it's ultimate for us. I mean, paycheck is going to be ultimate. 10 K to the winner. What does the winner of that K. get? 10k there you go see yeah say no more these guys same, have same. to split it six ways but <laughs> same same and i mean but these guys smaller smaller entry they're over a weekend right paid yeah they played 28 weeks <laughs> it was a longer season yeah definitely warren looking pretty good here i'm gonna try to drink some again see if it'll work i'm hoping it won't in case you guys are wondering I'm not trying to jinx him I'm trying to not jinx him by <laughs> jinxing him. He's going to be okay here. He's just going to roll this one in, shoot the A in the top left. Angle's nice here. Just don't under hit it. And he didn't. He's perfect. Perfect. He's straight in okay. His opponent says, no, shoot it. <laughs> they need Anything this. Anything can happen. And they need Dawn to get this eight ball too. Yes. And then all of a sudden we're going to be a little closer. Let's get this match close. This is certainly missable, but I don't see Don missing this. He's He's been pretty dialed in all year, all tournament. He's one of their higher Fargos, so you know he's had to win like every game mm -hmm. the whole tournament, right? 11-7. Two games, bing, bang, boom. It happens quick, too. You think you got a big lead, and then all of a sudden it just evaporates so fast. So game 19-20. Down to the last two games of the fourth round. Good, bad, and ugly breaking with a chance to get this within two with a round to play. Thanks, Peter. Let's see what these guys are doing on their break. I think Derek Anderson broke and ran out his last rack. Let's see if Mike's hitting head ball here or second ball. Ooh, second ball hard. That was a really good break. Really good break. He brought the cue ball out from the rail, so he's bridging on the cloth. That was nice. That was nice. Real nice. I like uh, I like high ball here, he's I got think. A good look, yeah. Maybe a bit of a tricky opener to control the cue ball because he has to shoot the 10 inside. But once he's got that right, it should be pretty easy. He made three high balls on that break? Just three. Just three. Be interesting to see, because I know there, there's been talk about it. They brought an ultimate pool to Canada. How many, how many players would get? How many players would be interested? We're going to get lots. <laughs> I think, you know, it's just we love eight ball. the game, the game just needs a change, you know, like yeah. everybody's been playing the same sanctions for however many mm -hmm. years. I fully agree. As much as I love these, you know, I love BCA. I've been to the event a whole bunch of times. I do think there needs to be more options. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, they're all relatively the same, to be honest, yeah. you know, uh, ACS and CCS. Same thing, BCA, very, very VNEA, rules, TAP, like yeah. very similar. Yeah. You go to the to the events and you all expect the same thing. Yeah, the every format's event. the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Double elimination, no shot clock, you know, it's just eight ball with, you know, same kind of stuff, right? This ultimate pool is much different. Yeah, just a little twist. There's different format. Same thing format. with a little twist. Yeah, different, same game with a twist, yeah. But how a open to change are we? That is the question. Canadians? Canadians, yep. Not very... Unfortunately. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, Mikey. He let that one get away, and now how do you get on the eight? He's so straight. Yeah. He's so straight. Two ball on the rail. Can he use the one? Can he go in off the one? Change the angle. He can. It's, it's riskier. Yeah. That might be the only thing he can do. I don't think he's got anything. You see him. He just kind of slammed his chalk down there. He's yeah. not thrilled. Yeah, I mean, Steven would do this, hey? Steven's good at that. He'd yeah. Jack up, even though it's frozen. So he would tight to the rail. Draw it. Yeah. Yeah, he's good at that shot. I started practicing it because I was like, well, if he can do it, I can do it. 
Yeah. And apparently, you can draw it, even when it's frozen. You can get, because your tip forces through the rail. Through I think the that's rubber. probably the, the trick. Oh, he did play it off the one. That yeah, didn't do him any good. Not, not what he had envisioned, but he was there. <laughs> he had the right idea. Such a hard shot when you elevate like that. It's just crazy. But I guess when you do that shot, you would have to cue through the ball. Like you really have yep. to follow oh, through, yeah. like, like yeah. put that tip right into the, into the cloth. Yeah. Right? And into the rubber, it's got to like almost bend the rubber a bit out of the way. Right. To mm -hmm. get into mm -hmm. the ball. Like, that's, oh I, yeah, I see. It's tricky. That would be a tough shot for sure. That's about 10 out of 10. So what does he do here? Does he have a shot? I don't think he does, but you kind of have to go for something. You can't just leave it tied up. Oh, he had the cut. Oh, super effort. Didn't miss it by much, actually. His Q is going to be feeling the pain this tournament, man. He has just raged <laughs> on that Q all tournament. <laughs> going to need a new uh, bumper. New rubber bumper on the end there. He, might. he needs one with some extra cushion. Yeah. I think I just saw the score there was 6-4. Six, six, yeah. Looked like Chris was going to get out. Seal the deal. But he didn't. Corey's still alive. Don't want to let that guy get an extra sniff. Still alive. Such a good eight ball player. Corey, he's got such a great mind for eight ball. It's just unreal. I can't stuff imagine. He sees, like, can't imagine the, the knowledge he's got in that brain. It's just got to be going a million miles a minute. Yeah, you got to wonder what's going through his head. Like, it's too many calculations, right? <laughs> too many patterns. Okay, well, Who is that? Like is that Ray on the left? They've subbed Ray in. I was wondering if we'd get to see Ray in this match. I think they've, and it most likely not because somebody's playing good or bad. These guys just like to play together. Mm -hmm. you know? So it's like, hey, you didn't get to play this match. Like, you know, let's yeah. put you in. Ray is their captain. We call him El Capitan. And he's great at it. He's such a good team captain. Mm -hmm. he, so organized. Yeah, he just takes care of everything for his team. Team doesn't have to worry about nothing. And like the fees and stuff, like you just don't have to worry about this guy. He just takes I care of everything. I love those guys. Yeah, aren't they nice? Love <laughs> those guys. That's a nice shot. That was a really nice shot. These games are big. They can close it out with these two. Ray's going to know. They can put him on the hill. And it uh, looks like Glenn's got a nice look over there. Oh, he punched it. Yeah, he did get, he had to get a little snatchy on the stroke to make sure he didn't, you know, kind of clip the five or something funny. But yeah, he's left Mike a real tough bank here. Yeah, he didn't, uh, not the worst leave for sure. So what's going on with the eight ball on the other table? How do you get on the eight from here? Can you get like middle table and play it in the lower left? Is it cuttable like by missing the five, or do you have to draw to the other side of it? I, you know, is there a window to the eight in the bottom right? That's what I'm wondering. Does he have to get? Does he have to punch to the other I side? I think it goes. Oh, he did. It's, How good is that? Yeah, he's got a gap there. Wow. Now and now they need Mike to make that bank, and he's not going to. Oh. Oh, if this goes in, it's over. Oh man, oh, that would have been God. it. That would have been it, because it would have been Glenn to shoot this eight to win as the crowd walks by. Yeah, you know, you know, good, bad, and ugly, they've had a bit of a tough match here, but they should hold their head high. They, they can come back, get some revenge in the final. Mm -hmm. I know it's not over yet, but it's feeling pretty over. Still A side. Yeah, that's that's the most important thing here, is you got to keep your head up because you're still in the tournament. Yep. You get too discouraged from losing here, and then you can't win the next match. Yeah, you gotta you gotta stay hungry. You wanted to eat their rice, yeah, <laughs> and you did. <laughs> I said. Well, next you year, know when when you feel like you just want to eat three thousand or something, you, you go you for the bowl rice. of rice. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Don't I just really craving three thousand or something? <laughs> yeah. I love that. I told them they have to name their team next year. Who ate? LP's rice. <laughs> okay, they gave him the eight. That was actually a, a good gentleman move, I believe, there to give them that eight. Conceded it. The match was the, over. The they were hanger. Never the hanger. Okay, we're going to shut it down, restart it. We'll be right back. We got the B-side finals going to be up pretty shortly. 
Um, they're playing the semifinal on the other tables. Shouldn't be too long, so don't go too far. Thanks, everyone. See you soon.